Hi, my name is Angie Griffith and I'm the host of Podfluencer Society podcast. First, let's start with a question that I ask everyone. And that is what's your podcasting origin story? How did you get started? Oh gosh, it's such a long story. So I'm going to give you like the, the tiniest, note. Yeah. babyest <laughs> cliff note <laughs> version, but I spent most of my career in the music business. So I was an artist manager for anyone who's not familiar. You're basically the goalie for the recording artist. So mm -hmm. all the artist has all these different, you know, players that work together to launch their album, launch their tour, like their publicist, their publisher, their tour manager, all these different players. And it's the artist manager's job to kind of dissect all of the incoming information mm -hmm. and present it to the artist in a way that really makes sense. And then come back to the team with this cohesive plan going forward. And then we have to make sure it all happens in the way that we all planned. So I did That's that a really cool job. <laughs> it's okay. It seems like it, like everyone thinks like, Oh, artist manager. It's so glamorous. Cause they look at like E on entourage where uh -huh. all they do is party together all the time. And like, while there are those moments they're very few and far between. And like the majority of our day is like a grind. It's 24 seven. Uh -huh, it's a I lifestyle career. Yeah. Yeah. And so eventually I started to think to myself, like, this just doesn't make sense. It doesn't compute uh -huh. in my brain. Why would I work 24 seven to build someone else's empire? Yeah. <laughs> So I started to consider like, what can I do to build my own brand and my own business? And through a series of events that led me to podcasting. Nice. Yeah. So how does podcasting fit into your current business offerings that you're doing? So when I first started my podcasting journey, I actually was offered a deal by another manager in town. I live in Nashville. And he essentially offered to sign me as his first ever podcasting client. And we were going to go, he was offering my current salary plus bonuses. And it was like this dream come true scenario that like yeah. does not happen. I know you have like a background in entertainment too. Like it doesn't happen that like a manager signs another manager. <laughs> yeah, that's so, pretty rare. Yeah. So we both talked about it and we decided it would be, you know, the right thing to do to offer it to my current company first, rather than going and signing with a competitor. So that's what I did. And then my current company offered the same deal, salary plus bonuses, plus I get to keep my assistant. And so I obviously couldn't refuse that offer. And so that's what we started to do. And then all of a sudden the pandemic hit. And so at that moment, we were like, okay, it doesn't make sense to start this risky project when we have to pull down all of our tours, which is the majority of our income. Yeah. So we decided, hey, let's put this on hold. And then in the meantime, all of the senior managers at the company were tasked with finding new business. And so it made sense for me to find new business in podcasting. And so I built out, along with one of the founders of our company, built out a podcast division and was able to launch some really amazing projects, launched a, a podcast for one of our music clients, did a uh -huh. really cool network deal for another client. And I just used that opportunity to really create as many relationships as I could in the podcasting space and just to learn and absorb as much as I possibly could. And then after about a year of that, when we started to put back up all of our tours, I essentially went to the company and said, you know, this project we originally wanted to do, it doesn't really make sense for anybody anymore. We've all moved on. And uh -huh. essentially, like I tried to quit two years ago, you have to let me go. Uh -huh. And so I took the department that we had built together, essentially, I mean, I took one of our clients as my first retainer client, which worked out perfectly, nice, and was able to just start a business in podcasting. But at the time, I didn't know what I was going to do in podcasting. I knew I eventually wanted to be a podcaster myself and to have the podcast of my dreams. But my first priority was how do I make consistent income and replace uh -huh. the salary that I've had? And so my business has evolved over the, that was two years ago. I started my own brand, my own business, and it's continued to evolve. It's still evolving. It will always be evolving and growing. But essentially, I kind of do like a mix of a lot of different things. I have consulting services. I recently founded a podcast network where I'm focusing on helping my friends in podcasting to monetize their content. And then my number one priority is just building my own legacy brand as a podcaster myself. Nice. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, the clip that I'm going to play after this interview is about rebranding and you recently rebranded. So I want to talk about what your podcast was before and what it is now and what inspired that change. 
Yes. So again, when I first started my own brand, my own business in podcasting, I knew I wanted to have the podcast of my dreams one day, but like, as we all tell ourselves in podcasting, like it's never the right time. Mm -hmm. And so I just told myself, I have to have, if I'm going to do any business in podcasting, I have to have something out there in the podcasting apps so that I'm searchable for people looking, yeah, looking for podcast services. And so I didn't want to add any more podcast work to my plate. Uh And so I was like, okay, what can I do? That's like quick and easy. So I was like, okay, four things for your podcast in four minutes or less. I'll do a four minute episode once a week, like really, you know, condensed value in four minutes, which in hindsight, of course, makes more sense for like YouTube shorts or TikTok. But at the time, again, I was just trying to get something in the podcast apps. And after about like six months of that, it just, I hated every minute of it. It was so draining. It didn't feel in alignment. It just felt like something I was forcing myself to do. And I decided, you know what? It's never going to be the right time. Let me just turn this into an asset that I actually can get return on. I mean, that's not the worst strategy though. Four minute episodes. It's a pretty low lift production wise for you. You're getting your name out there. You're taking advantage of SEO. So what were the results from that first round? Was it worth it to do that? Like if there was a business owner like you two years ago who was wondering, should I do this like scaled down version just to get my name out there? What would your answer be? In my experience, now there are other podcasts that do similar formats. Like Pod News Daily is a good example. They do a short recap of their newsletter and that's perfect. Like that is something that I would get behind and like recommend. Uh But for what I was serving, for instance, four tips about how to market your podcast, four tips about how to legally use music in your podcast. The tools and resources we have today, again, TikTok was very beginning stages when I started my podcast. But with TikTok and Clapper and YouTube Shorts, there's ways that people are used to absorbing that kind of information that I feel like can be more impactful. And I, I really do believe that people come to podcasts to listen in the background as they're driving and working out or going on a walk around their neighborhood. And they're there for more conversational and like getting to know you type pieces of content and maybe and, going deeper. Yeah. And going deeper. Yeah. And so people ask me all the time when I have like consulting meetings with people, they ask, is this something they can do? And I always say like, I don't recommend it because in my experience, I got like no traction on those early episodes. Oh, really? Yeah. People just did not care. It's not what they were in the apps to listen to. Uh-huh. So yeah. And then, okay. So how did you approach this rebrand and tell us about the new show. It was about six months into doing those four minute clips that I finally was like, you know what? I need to start taking this seriously and like, see if I can find joy in this Uh content that I'm producing. And so I started to release like longer form solo episodes and I did my first guest interview and that just felt like so much more in alignment. And Uh even though it was so much more work on the back end it felt like so much less work because it was actually enjoyable. And like, it actually, I felt like it was something that I was proud of. Like every single episode that I put out, I would listen to, whereas before I wouldn't, you know? Uh So I started doing that. And then what I realized about, I don't need, I'm so bad with timelines, but like eventually as of recently, I started to feel really constricted by the title for things for your podcast, because I just felt like I was putting myself in this box that was this title that I threw together for a completely different show. When I started doing longer form episodes and inviting guests on, I would ask the guests, like, what are your four takeaways from whatever the topic Uh you're sharing is? And then that felt like I was putting too much work on my guests. So then I started recapping my four takeaways and that just felt like such an extra line item on my to-do list Uh that like I didn't want to do. I hated doing it. And so eventually I was like, you know what? It's time for a title change. The audience that I'm speaking to isn't the same that I was speaking to at the beginning, because again, at the beginning, 
we're all learning in our journey as entrepreneurs, like what actually brings us joy to speak Uh on. Right. And at the beginning, I thought I was going to be speaking to the brand new podcaster. I thought I was going to be the, how to start a podcast go to girl. Uh And I realized I actually hate that. Like I (laughs) love working with existing podcasters Uh talking about like marketing and branding and like how to take it to the next level. And what I've learned in the past two years of discovering my voice in this space is that's what I'm talking to. I'm talking to what I've come up with this term to kind of describe is podfluencer, which uh-huh. is the creator who's building a thriving brand and business with their podcast at the center of it all. So that's what I'm speaking to. And then it was just kind of putting the pieces together from there. Like, okay, podfluencer, what should it be? Podfluencer podcast, podfluencer society, landed on society, filed the trademark like that next day, started the whole process of rebranding. And it just all felt so, so, so good. <laughs> so you'd already switched the content, doing this longer form content and adding the guests and changing your show basically under the old name. Yes. And and then since that felt right and since you were felt like you were maybe forcing these questions and whatever, these takeaways, then you actually did the external branding, rebranding, right? Yes. The only thing content wise that changed was when I rebranded to the new title, Uh I took away that extra step of recapping the four things at the end. (laughs) Right. Right. And you dropped new cover art. And what did you do for promo as far as the rebrand? I mean, you're oh my gosh, to me today, but what else? <laughs> the promo. I mean, I'm about to record a whole episode about all the promo that I did behind it because it truly, it was a decision I made because I could have decided to just kind of flip it all in the background and then yep. surprise my audience, maybe like, you know, give them a little heads up. But I just thought what an amazing opportunity for new momentum and to uh-huh. breathe new life into the podcast. And so I just decided to take it seriously. And I treated it as I would a brand new podcast launch. And so the promo was like really comprehensive. I mean, I did, you know, I submitted for some directory features like Apple podcast, Spotify, Stitcher. Unfortunately, nobody took me up on that, but I did submit it. And then I also, yeah, I started working with an incredible publicist who you know well, Lauren Passell from Tink Media, Uh who is just absolutely amazing. So she helped me to arrange some really cool promo swaps and guest interviews, like guesting on other podcasts and newsletter placements, which are highly underrated. A lot of people don't think to pitch to newsletters, but it's so powerful. And so just did a bunch of stuff like that, working with Lauren. My favorite thing I did was something that I almost didn't do, because if you think about it, it doesn't like create results. Like the thing I'm about to tell you is I bought a billboard, a billboard in downtown Nashville. Interesting. And, yeah. And if you think about it, like what good is that going to do? Like somebody driving down the road, they see a billboard for a podcast. Like they're not going to like stop and subscribe. So if you think about it that way, it's a waste of money. But how I was thinking about it is it's a really cool opportunity for like social proof, you know? Yes. And it was more about like the impact on social media and it was covered in pod news, like podcast ads in the wild, like that kind of stuff. And it was probably the smartest thing I did for the entire promotion strategy, just because of how impactful it was online. It was my highest engaged post across all social media platforms. It got covered the most like organically and it just looked really cool. Like even my like friends from high school were reaching out being like, that is so cool. You got a billboard. And I'm like, dude, all I did was pay $250 for 30 $250? minutes. $250? Well, for 30 minutes on a rotating digital screen. Oh. So I got eight minutes. Yeah. Eight minutes of screen time because it was all about the photo. Like it wasn't about results from drivers driving by, you know? (laughs) Okay. How do people do that? What's, is there a website? Well, it just depends. Like it depends where you live or like where you're targeting. Like one of my good friends, James, he hosts a true crime podcast. And this is actually where I got the idea because what he does to promote his true crime podcast is he advertises in the area where he's talking about, which is so smart because people really want to know like crime in their area. So I was thinking, okay, well, I don't talk about like a specific area. So I live in Nashville. This is a really cool hip city. Everyone loves Nashville. And we have this amazing billboard right at the intersection of Broadway and West End, which is like in the downtown area. It's a perfect spot for a billboard. 
And I just went to their website and just saw the different options and picked the cheapest one. Cause again, it's all about the photo, uh -huh. but wherever you're based, like it, I'm sure there's a billboard in your town that like people drive by every day. And if you post with that billboard, it's just cool for the people in your town, you know, and like cool for everyone yeah. who knows you personally to see that. I'm curious in the submissions that you sent to Apple podcasts and Spotify and Stitcher, did you include that you were going to do the billboard? I did. And here's my piece of advice. <laughs> so I really think I, 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 can, I was just moving so quickly. I had so much uh -huh. to get done, like promotion. The reason I brought Lauren on is because I knew how important marketing would be. But uh -huh. the reality is I had so much to like update behind the scenes that I couldn't put my own time. There's just not enough hours in the day. Right. So when I was submitting my feature requests, I did it too quickly and I forgot the most key ingredient, which is, yes, I told them all about my different marketing strategies. Like I gave them a whole list of all the different things, including the billboard to show them that like, I'm really taking this seriously. And this uh -huh. is a big deal on this one day was that's uh -huh. the message I was trying to convey. But looking back, I really should have approached it more with like a co-marketing mentality. And I should have, for instance, chosen one platform went all in like Apple podcasts, for instance. And I, uh -huh. I should have said, I will drive all of my traffic to Apple podcasts. If you will, in return, you know, help uh -huh. me to, to promote. And, and I really think I, that I was my Apple big mistake. Podcasts on the billboard. And right. Yes. Yeah, like yeah. that kind of thing. And yeah. I really wish I would have done that now I know going forward, but yeah, I, I really think that has a lot to do with why I'm kind of missed that opportunity. But yeah, I mean, sounds like you got some other ones. So that's, that's actually, I love the billboard tip and that's something I really want to try. So can you give besties just a couple quick tips for how to do a rebrand, right? Things that you've learned on this journey. Sure. I would say my biggest tip is to organize yourself. <laughs> like this is something that comes naturally to me because I was in artist management for nearly a decade and uh -huh. my job was to be organized, but for the average person, it can be really challenging. And so what I live and breathe by is so simple. It's just a freaking Google sheet, <laughs> like uh -huh. list out everything, you know, you need to do. And then just put it all in order of priority and just start working down the list because it can feel so overwhelming. My rebrand timeline, so essentially my checklist was over, I, I can't remember the exact number, but it was well over 350 line items of oh just little God. things because there's things you don't think of. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I had to change the name of my entity of my business, uh -huh. which means I had to change the, you know, my bank account and my PayPal account and like all uh -huh. this stuff that you don't think of. My website changed, my URL changed, all of my free downloadables out there in the world. I had to change the branding on those and the links everywhere. It's like all these things you don't think about. So my biggest, biggest tip is to stay organized, but I also, as part of what I'm doing to help my own audience through their rebranding uh -huh. is I put together a checklist uh -huh. and people can go to podfluencerproducts.com forward slash rebrand. And it gives you a checklist of all the things that you just oh, don't want to forget when it, well, yeah, when it comes to your rebrand, it's been super helpful. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing a little bit about your journey. Are there any recent favorite episodes that you want to shout out that were extra impactful for you? Yes. So the last episode that I put out under the old branding was year two in online business, my unfiltered truth. And that's something I am doing on an annual basis, just to update my audience about like the real behind the scenes, like my uh -huh. financials, my download numbers, and just be like open and transparent so that my audience can learn from my journey. And in that episode, I talk more about, you know, the story behind why it was time to rebrand. And then the first episode under the new branding, I brought on a return guest who's a good friend of mine, Allie Reeves, who hosts uh -huh. All In With Allie. And we talked about her recent rebranding process. So you kind of get two perspectives because she rebranded her podcast in January from her former title, Six Figure Influencer, after I believe it was like 300 episodes. I mean, she had been under that title for a long time. So really insightful. And then the next episode after that is with my photographer who took my rebrand photos. And we did this comprehensive overview about like how to approach a rebrand photo shoot, which is uh -huh. super cool. 
And then I have one coming out with Lauren of Tink Media, all about publicity and like marketing and promotion strategies, which is going to be awesome. I love it. So you're covering the rebrand from all different angles. That's great. Yes. Yes. 